bless you. You can be seated. Woo. If you have your Bibles tonight, say amen. I want you to turn with me, if you will, to the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah, chapter number 4. Zechariah chapter 4. I'm going to be reading verses 6 and 7. Zechariah 4, verses 6 and 7. The word of the Lord reads, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain. The word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. I want to talk to you for a few minutes tonight on what are you going to do with your mountain. Amen. There's a lot more to this chapter of the book of Zechariah that I could get into tonight, but that is not what I'm going to get into. For just a very few minutes, I want to talk to somebody and I want to encourage you. It seems like on every hand, you have been in the crater of a volcano. So that everywhere you look, there is a mountain rising above you. You feel as if you are sinking and the mountain is getting higher around you. And no matter which way you turn, there is only a mountain. It seems like every time you get past one obstacle, there is another. Every time you get past one thing, there's something else. Every time you encounter one thing and overcome and persevere and push through, there is something else standing in your way. And it seems like that every time you get past one, the next one gets a little taller because you're not strong as you were when you overcame the last one. You've not had time to recover. You've not had time to regain your strength. You've not had time to rest between one battle and the next. God sent me by to tell you tonight, stop relying on your own understanding and stop relying on your own strength and stop looking to yourself and stop wondering what you are going to do. You've been going through battle after battle after battle and your alliance, your dependence has gone away from depending upon the strength and the power and the, the, the Spirit of God moving and you've been asking God, why hasn't it got better for me? See, when you get what I, could, I guess you could kind of call unlimited mountain syndrome, UMS, you get the ums, 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 ums. And you look up and you say, is there ever going to be an end to this? You are at a pivotal place in warfare over your life. There's an encounter here with a great mountain. Not a regular one. We went up into the mountains, into the edge of the mountains on vacation, but I've been told it's nothing like going to the Rockies. That the mountains here in the Appalachians and the Great Smoky Mountains are nothing could be compared with the Rockies. Then I hear other people say that the Rockies are nothing to be compared with Mount Kilimanjaro. And then others say, yes, but nothing compares with Mount Everest, the great mountain. 
people have made it their life's goal to climb Everest only to die upon its slopes. Many is the corpse that has never come down from the great heights of that mountain. It stands as a bastion of impossibility and few have ever climbed to this peak. Few have ever been able to stake the claim that I have climbed this mountain. And great as it is, it still does not mount up to some of the things that we face in our spiritual walk with God. There are times some of you would rather climb a mountain than face some of the things that you're facing or have faced in your life. God asked this question through the prophet, Who are you, O great mountain? What or who, are, who do you think you are? when compared with my spirit. What will you accomplish? What will you do when compared to my spirit? You see, many people have gone and they have had bearers and they've gone and tried to climb Mount Everest. I remember watching the footage of when Mount Hood, it wasn't it Mount Hood that blew up, the volcano that blew up? Mount St. Helens and blew ash for miles and miles States away, hundreds of miles away, ash was falling and affected the atmosphere. God says, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? The one that I have spoken to, that it will not be by anything that you can accomplish. It will not be by how many armies you amass. It will not be by the strength of your arm, and it will not be by what you can do. But by my Spirit, I will flatten a mountain before you. And make it smooth and plain. Too many times in our lives we encounter situations and we look to ourselves. Our faith depends on how we can see things changing in the situation. Anybody besides me ever done it? Our faith is only activated as far as we can possibly believe. We cannot look past the impossibility to see the possible. We can't get past our own selves and therefore the futility of our mind runs into our faith and we choose one or the other. What will we do when faced with an insurmountable situation? So many times in our lives when we're facing these kinds of battles, we come up against obstacles that are too big for us to take on on our own, and yet we still try to go all alone. I mean, have you ever gone into a situation in your life and ran up against something bigger than you thought? And the first thing you want to do was call for backup. You wanted to be able to get on the radio. <laughs> we got a situation here. I need some backup. Not by your might. Not by any force or power or strength that you have. Not by your valor, even though you may have fought many times and have fought many battles. It's not by anything that you can accredit to yourself. It is not any substance or any wealth that you can amass or that you can throw at a problem. How many of you know there are some problems there's no amount of money in the world can change or fix it? There's about five more y'all should have shouted amen. If some of you could have bought your sons or your daughters out of trouble and it would have worked, you'd have found the money. Money would not work. Not by might, nor by power. It's not by any influence or leverage that you might possess in life. It's not by anything that you could possibly manipulate under your own means. It is not by might, nor is it by power. But God said, this is my word unto you, Zerubbabel. This is my word unto the king. It is by my spirit 
It is not by anything that you possess, anything you can possess, anything you will possess. It is not by anything you could do. What I am doing is outside of any realm of possibility for you. I am sending the impossible. It is my spirit that is going to be at work and work through this. He then goes beyond that and says, not only will my spirit be at work, but let me show you just how far I am going to let my spirit and cause my spirit to work. I am going to prophesy to the mountain that you're facing, Zerubbabel, and I am going to tell the mountain that by my spirit working, not in spite of, not around, he says, but before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. Zerubbabel had to face that mountain in order for it to flatten. What you will not face, God cannot fix. You have never been healed from that broken relationship. You have never been healed from that thing that happened to you when you were a child. You have never been healed from the loss of that loved one who died because you have never faced that mountain. You don't want to look at that mountain. You feel that if you don't look at that mountain, it will go away on its own accord. This was not in anything that I had in my mind. This is the Lord speaking to somebody. That place in you that is so broken that you cannot get past and get over, you will never, never get past it until you face it again. You have to face the fact that it did happen. You have to face the fact that you are hurt. You have to face the fact that you have not recovered yet. And then you have to face the fact that I can't do it, but I have to let God work through me on it. Not by might nor my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. For who are you, O mountain, O great mountain? Before, before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, not, not a molehill. I started to title this sermon making mountains in the mole hills, not mountains out of, but mountains in the mole hills. But that's not even far enough. Because God said it would be a plain, it will be brought, the heights would be brought down flat. There is somebody in here, I, I, I'm telling you, this just keeps flying up in my spirit. There is somebody in here, you have been almost swallowed by a hurt in your life. It has been like an insurmountable, unclimbable mountain. And you have never been able to go forward with your life since it happened. You have been up against it time and again. And you have gotten to the point now where you honestly do not believe God could have pushed it down to the size of a mole hill. And you will not turn around and face it because you, you're, you're, you've lost the climb so many times that you have given up on ever getting past it. When God's Spirit begins to work in and through your life. The things that are insurmountable, the things that are higher than you could possibly imagine, God will flatten in front of you. It will not be 25 years down the line. It said before him, right where he was standing, in his midst, in his sight, the mountain will be made a plain. It would not take 27 years and $437,000 worth of counseling and 297 broken relationships and 
493 help, self-help books. He said before him, immediately before him, the great mountain, the insurmountable thing, that thing that had been holding him back, the thing that's been holding you back, in your sight before you, it would be brought flat. God's going to squash it. How many of you ever killed a bug going, Ew. you just kind of tap it? You don't squat, you just kind of tap it. Well, you tap it, what's it going to do? Mm, keep on running. Why? Because you're too scared to squash it. You're too scared to squash it. I'm going to have to go catch about 25 non-poisonous snakes and give my wife a hoe and teach her how to kill a snake without me being there. She called me on the phone the other day. And I said, hey, baby. I said, baby, hold on. What is it? What is it? I rolled down my window here at the church and I could hear her. <laughs> and I finally got out. That's a snake. That's a snake. You got to come on right now and kill it. That's a snake. I said, baby, get the gun and kill it. I'm not leaving it. I can't get it. I was like, hallelujah. She got the spirit of God on her. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Mm. Luckily, I was already going home. I get there. And I hear, hear, hear Sarah says, Andrew said it's just a black snake. But it's a snake, baby. You got to come kill it. Oh, he moved. He moved. Ah, no, 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 no. He's moving. He's moving. I pull up in the yard. She has a 97-foot limb. I thought she was trying to make fire. She looked like a cave woman. I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. If he had to come out in the yard under her feet, she would have climbed that stick. <laughs> she would have stabbed it in the ground and climbed that stick. Either that or pole vaulted onto the top of the house. Oh, he's getting healed right now. Laughter does good like medicine. Be healed, brother. And listen, I came home and I said, baby, calm down. He's not going to hurt you. I don't care. I don't care. Kill him. Kill him. Get your gun. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. I want him there. Kill him. So I grabbed the first shotgun I had available and couldn't find shells for it. Except for buckshot. So I put it back in the truck, went in the house, Got my 410, come back outside. I said, y'all move. She, and I come out and she was screaming again. Ah, he's moving. He's crawling around toward you. Yeah, he tried to climb. He, you know, the snake jumped up on the side of the house. He was trying to get away from the insane woman with a nine-foot-long stick. <laughs> he, he was trying to do what I would do if somebody pulled out one of them rattlesnakes in church. He was trying to make a door through the wall. I guarantee you, I'll reopen that thing. Somebody pulls out a rattlesnake in here, I can't get to that door. I will make a new door. I'll go through that window. We'll have to put a new one. I'm going out. The devil is a lie. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I'm like, Wendy Bagwell, I don't have a jealous bone in my body. You can keep mine. I get the gun, kill the snake, one shot. She thought I was Superman. Oh, baby, that was a great shot, baby. Oh, thank you, baby. She just came and hugged on me and loved on me. I was like, that's right, baby. I killed that snake. That's right. That's what I'm here for, baby. Hey, can't nobody kill a snake like me. I got you. Yee -hee. Live action. Yee -hee. Dead action. Boom. And listen. She's the same way about a roach or a spider. I guarantee you, she will climb the wall to get away from one. 
outside. She looks like she got the spirit. <laughs> Either that or, oh. You do, 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 do. I did all of that to make a point. See, y'all thought I got sidetracked, didn't you? I know right where I'm at. I'm standing behind the podium in the Restoration Point Church. You got to know right where I'm at. No. I'm making a point. She calls me to come squash and squelch her problems. She knows that she has the ability, but somehow she can't use the ability because of fear. And there are some of you that have been facing things in your life. They've been there for years. And you have the ability to change your situation. But you will not and you cannot because of fear. So you need to call on the one who is able. To take what you see as impossible and squash it and squelch it flat in front of you so that you can go forward with the rest of your life. My God, I feel the Spirit of the Lord backing me up on this. It's time to call on a higher power because on the inside there's two or three of you in here that you're screaming just like she did on the phone. I don't know what you might be facing in your life. There's two or three more people that were here this morning that should have been here tonight. That was a shameless plug by the pastor for Sunday night service. But there's some people here tonight that you have been facing a mountain that just will not go away. God sent me by to tell you tonight that his spirit is available to touch you tonight. And to help take that mountain down so that you can go forward with your life. Brother Scott, I want you to come and play something. Just in, and I may come back to that chapter of Zechariah. There's some good stuff in there about the lampstand and the olive trees that stand there and continually feed the olive, the lampstand. But tonight God told me to come by and tell somebody it's not going to happen any other way than by His Spirit moving in your life. No matter what you might possibly try to affect as far as change goes, you've not been able to do it. There's some of you, you're facing a mountain of life. It's just life. But there's two or three people in here that you've had a mountain in the way a long time. And you have been afraid to face it. I want everyone to stand tonight.